Energy prices are rising everywhere. Getting more kilometer per charge is crucial. Today, Rev is going to tell you exactly how to drive more efficiently with your EV. To put things into context, in Germany it costs around 40 cents per kilowatt hour at an AC charger right now, which means it costs around 30 euro for a full charge. This is worth potentially around 350 kilometers in this Tesla Model 3 performance. Of course, I have a few tips and tricks to maximize this range, which I will share with you now. And yes, some of these tips also apply to combustion engine machines. Drive consciously, act instead of react. Avoid standing still moments because the most amount of energy is consumed when you take off from zero. If you really pay attention to the road ahead and the traffic patterns, you will find there are a lot of signs that you can read in advance. After all, you might not need to come to a complete stop if that traffic signal is about to change from yellow to green. Instead, you could slow down just enough, keep the car's momentum going and then move off once again. Because braking to a complete halt and then driving off once again from zero consumes a lot of energy. So be conscious of your surroundings and act accordingly. Get to your speed limit as quick as possible, if the traffic allows it. The quicker you get to your cruising speed, the better it is for the consumption. Keep in mind, how you treat your accelerator pedal has a direct influence on the range. So always be gentle on the accelerator, even while you aim to hit the speed limit quickly. Once at your cruising speed, settle in there for as long as possible to make sure your energy consumption is stable. Regular bursts of acceleration and deceleration will have a negative impact on consumption. Of course, this rule mostly applies to driving in the city. When you are flat out on unrestricted stretches of the German Autobahn, for example, expect your range to drop dramatically. This is because at speeds above 80 km per hour, drag or resistance increases exponentially, which means your EV needs more power, which in turn means more consumption. For highways, long stretches and less traffic, cruise control can help you to reduce consumption. Most modern cars, EVs included, come with a lot of driver aids that could potentially help extend range. Cruise control is one of them. When the car's computer is in charge of making changes to the speed, it's often a lot more precise than human input. And especially if a car has predictive or adaptive cruise control, its ability to be energy efficient increases. Of course, some cars also come with eco mode, or as it's called chill mode in the Tesla, which limits the power on offer, thus potentially conserving energy. Make use of the topography. Be conscious of elevation changes. Think like a cyclist. The more uphill it goes, the more energy is consumed. The more downhill it goes, the more you are relieved. Like in most vehicles, driving uphill consumes more energy. And letting the car coast downhill helps conserve energy. Some EVs allow you to disengage regenerative braking entirely, which will allow you to coast downhill as if you were neutral, which of course only works if you've got a clear stretch of road ahead of you. But regenerative braking or one pedal driving in some cars converts the car's kinetic energy into electrical energy that gets stored in the battery. So if you have the option of adjusting the regen on your EV, opting for 100% regen will help you to get more out of a single charge. It's all about the wheel, the rim, the tire size, the width, all that has an influence. Of course, the thinner and lighter the tire, the less resistance, the less consumption. You could always opt for thinner tires or lighter rims, but keeping your tire pressure in check is the quickest way to make sure that your EV is driving energy efficiently. When tires are underinflated, the contact patch on the road surface increases, which means the resistance increases, which in turn increases consumption. When the tires are properly inflated, the contact patch on the road surface decreases, decreasing resistance, in turn reducing consumption. 
A good guideline is to inflate an unloaded cast tire to the pressure that the manufacturer recommends for when the car is fully loaded. Keep in mind though, with higher tire pressure and less contact to the road, both comfort and safety are compromised. So now we will see if my tips really work. First lap, normal driving. For my first run, over the course of a 12 km loop through city traffic, I drove the way a lot of us normally do. I reacted to the traffic around me without thinking ahead, and I didn't really pay attention to how I was treating the accelerator or the brake pedal. At the end of the loop, I got a result. So now, second lap, efficient driving. On this run, I paid close attention to how I was driving, although I left the driver assistance systems off, just to see how my driving behavior could impact energy consumption, leading to this result. So now I'm back from my two runs. In my first run, I was driving very normally. In my second run, I tried to be as efficient as possible. That is actually the result. I was 4 minutes faster and 4.1 kilowatt hours more efficient. So being faster and efficient is a goal. I can say goal achieved. Do you also have some energy saving or range extending tips? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, subscribe to DWF.